I love following an economist, you know? <laughs> Everything was rational. You know, who got the Nobel Prize last week? Somebody that said we are irrational. <laughs> and you can predict irrationality, okay? So that, that's more of what I am. But no, I have a deep appreciation for economics. Took a lot of it in graduate school. Uh, I visited my economics professor this summer in Boston. I told him all these things I do based on what I learned in economics. He pauses, he looks at me. I know what he's thinking. God, he got it wrong. <laughs> but it's still, I, I do these things and, and that matters. And I want to tell you too, economists tell me that um, taste is something you, you usually you know, can't measure. Is that right, Ken, in economics? But uh, I violated that too. My wife and I learned that I was going to be a finalist for this position. I've never been to Lexington, Kentucky. So what did we do? Uh, the weekend before the interview, I think on a Tuesday, my wife and I flew here and we walked around campus and the city for two days. Nobody knew who we were. We talked to perfect strangers, people who cleaned the grounds, students who were studying in the library, what's it like here, talked to people at restaurants, went to find the art museum on campus. You know, we went to look for all the touchstones that we were going to leave behind. My wife and I were very engaged in our previous community, served on boards and uh, organizations, believe in paying our civic rent. And so we, we were looking for what, what are Lexington's taste? And, and can we find them here? And, and you can't find this in data. You, you got to touch it and feel it. And so that was important. And that's a tribute to uh, this city and its long history because it attracted us. And we have an interesting history here. We've been around for 150 years, bumpy rides at first. We started as an agricultural and mining college that was part of Kentucky University. And we were at Woodland Park, which is where Ashland Estates is, where Henry Clay's uh, home is today. Uh, there was some friction there. Um, but we, we apparently uh, broke up, and a lot of folks wanted to attract us to their community. Uh, I didn't realize this until we were preparing for these remarks that Bowling Green, Kentucky, wanted the University of Kentucky to reside, put a bid in. But I am grateful that Lexington and Fayette County won the prize, and they had to put some money down, respectively, Twenty and thirty thousand dollars in bonds were issued, and we got this 52-acre site from which we grew this great campus. We were uh, located around Maxwell Springs, the house that uh, Phil, the, that where we live is Maxwell Place, built in 1871. wasn't originally part of the university proper, um, but it is a home for the campus and a home for us. So this long association that began with Lexington, we're rooted in it. Our futures are inextricably intertwined. They just are. We're in and of Lexington, and I want to talk about what that future, I believe, needs to look like. Now, downtown has always played a role in the University of Kentucky. It's where people first go. I did it on my sneak visit here. You know, where's the entertainment? Where's the arts? Where's the shopping? Where's the dining? You know, where's the vibrancy of a town? So you certainly have to go there. We used to have a streetcar. I think this is a good idea. We maybe need to bring this back. It used to come up to Main Street and stop. You know, that mass transportation is a good idea. I think we need to return to it. I'd get less complaints about two things traffic and parking, you know? <laughs> so this works for me. And, and our administrators early on, we still fret over this a little, you know, we're worried about what kind of life our students would find downtown. So uh, Sarah Blanding, Dean of Women Students, used to, you know, go downtown to make sure students were not dancing at the Phoenix, which is where City Hall is now, it's uh, apropos. And, you know, people weren't congregating at certain places. Uh, we still worry about that a little today. But we offer this incredible 
set of rich opportunities together. So I, I have to tell you, you know, um, I was interviewed yesterday by a group of students, and somebody said, well, what is your typical day like? And not, none of them are typical, but my evening, I'll just share a bit of it. So I, I have a responsibility. I always get more invitations than I can fulfill. The Gluck Research Foundation, founded 30 years ago, we had a horrible uh, medical uh, crisis in our horse industry, um, could have ruined the industry. Um, they turned to researchers at the University of Kentucky, and uh, it, was, it was a great success story, solved this problem. They formed this Gluck Foundation. People came together to, to permanently endow the research to be forward-thinking, protect the industry, do the necessary research. So I go there. Where do we have it? It's because our student center's not ready yet. It's going to be beautiful, $210 million. Come back to see it. Uh, it'll invite you in, too. I did a, did a visit there this week, monumental staircase, all about building community, all about relationships, bringing people together. But it's not ready. So where do we go? Kroger Field, our football stadium, all right? We got the Woodward, Woodford Reserve Room, seated dinner there, lovely. While you're giving remarks, you can look out on the football field, 200 people doing yoga. Hey, this is a place I want to live. That's the kind of feel it had. And then I had to rush downtown to the Lexington Opera House. Why? Because something that started 20 years ago, uh, the Hope Center, Thousands of homeless people uh, are, uh, have a place to go. We were celebrating their 20th anniversary. But who's part of that celebration? Besides powerful testimony of people whose lives, who, they look just like me and you, have been victims of an opioid epidemic and so forth. They've been turned around. But what's part of that evening? UK's world-class opera department providing the performances you know, a source of inspiration. So that's what it's like to live here and to live in a university community. And you can't capture all that in data. But together, a city and a university can create that kind of atmosphere. And everybody in this room knows what we confront today and knows what a 21st century economy must create and collectively what kind of shared agenda we can have. So the other thing I like about living here is I can walk nearly anywhere I want to go. So I did, did my walking. I could go all the way to Kroger Field. I can get all the way downtown, and it's 25 minutes. You can keep moving, get all your steps in. It's great. So this morning, you know, because I worry about a lot of things, I get up early, get to walk to Starbucks. I would go to the one on campus, but our students, they don't get up till 8 o'clock. Starbucks doesn't open till 7, but... The local one you can get to at 5.30. And what I always I carry my newspapers, still read those. And I, and I always want to look at the editorial page of the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. So what, what's on those pages today? You know? uh, regulation of gene therapy, regulation of speech, regulation of health care, regulation of immigration, decline of civic institutions, uh, responding uh, to um, one another and communities in disaster relief. Now, if that's not what a university is about, we can contribute to every one of those discussions. And the people who are going to have to answer those questions when we're all gone, those are the people who we hold responsibility for today. And that is a sacred responsibility. And you can't do it in isolation. I think the best places to offer those kinds of rich experiences are in places that have vibrant cities. So we are fortunate. So what do cities provide us? They certainly provide us a, an ecosystem, efficient, effective delivery of public services. We can't do all this alone. We have our police force, but we have to rely on the police force of the city, and they have to work in partnership. Same with everything else. You get that high quality of life I talked about through community spaces and activities around parks, history and culture, the creative arts. You get a branding and bolstering 
of recruitment in support of a place to live, a robust economy, entrepreneurial spirit that we both can share and grow on. And then there's something else a city can give you and a university participates in. And that's your moral compass. Because at the University of Kentucky, we want to welcome you. We want you to belong. And we want your respect for individuals, especially those different from you. Those who have a different history and perspective and life story to be something you experience while you're here. And so what did we learn from our city this year? You know, there are better places for statues of Confederate generals than on the sacred ground where slaves were traded. So I salute the mayor. It was excellent leadership. You know, and, and we didn't move them in the middle of the night. You know, we tackled it and we had to work with people and all kinds of conversations had to be undertaken. And you know what? We, we, we're not airbrushing our history. We know more about it than we probably did before. And those are going to rest at a site that has a better context. So thank you again. And our students got to learn from all of that, right? Those are the roles they have to play in the future. So we offer this beautiful and iconic resource. You know, when you fly in here, there's nothing more beautiful. And all the elements you need to have a rich experience for students and faculty are here. And I believe at the end of the day, it really takes two things if you want to grow. And that is talent and infrastructure. That's why when I came here, I thought, gee, we, we can rebuild a campus. We got this incredible talent. What more could we do with modern space? So what are we today? Because of my predecessors, uh, Lee Todd, they had this crazy dream 13 years ago. Uh, we were going to be the regional referral center for tertiary and quaternary health care. If you would have brought me in for a, as a consultant and I know something about these things, I would have said, you were crazy. Town of 300,000 people, you're going to be the referral center? We had 19,000 admissions to our hospital 10 years ago. We had 39,000. We did 45 heart transplants last year. That's 15th in the country. The city of over a million people down the road has all kinds of hospitals and all. Did seven. So you know what? They made it a reality. A far-fetched dream. It reminds me every day the importance of not dreaming too little dreams and all the hard work you have to undertake to make it come through. So we have all kinds of partnerships we work on with the city. The mayor and I, frequent text messaging going on. You know, and and it's, it's wonderful. So our, our arrangements with property and swapping land and all those kinds of things we did uh, to preserve what we think is a core of a campus, but also give our city opportunity to grow. We've had $2.3 billion of construction here in the last six years. Only 10% of that came from the state. We did incredible public-private partnerships that were creative. This facility, the whole building, $65 million, all philanthropy. That science building that Phil mentioned that he likes to go to, the first philanthropist there. UK Athletics, $65 million. So we did all these creative things. But an, an important partner for us still is government. So the building I look forward to with greatest anticipation is our new research building. It's a $270 million structure. It's coming out of the ground now. It's already been framed up. And uh, the state said they'll pay for half and we'll pay for half. Now, it's going to have an economic development thrust because every one of those researchers are going to be, have to be nationally competitive and they're going to bring in external funds and create jobs and we can calculate all those. 
But the way we were able to convince the state of Kentucky to do that, I like to tell people I used two slides. I had visited Normandy in the summer. I saw a graveyard of 9,000 people. I then went to Eastern Kentucky where CDC Director Tom Frieden was speaking along with Congressman Hal Rogers. And Frieden showed a slide that said there were about 3,000 premature deaths just in Eastern Kentucky every year from cancer, diabetes, stroke, opioid addiction, those kinds of things. And I said, holy cow, we are filling a cemetery the size of Normandy every three years, unnecessarily. And I said, what are we doing about it? And then I, I broke down the funded research we have tackling all those areas, and it's enormous. We have to go out and compete for this. And I went to elected leaders and I said, we, we have the talent, we want to bring in more talent, we can compete, and, and we want to stop filling up graveyards prematurely. And so it is that bigger purpose that you can't always capture. What, what I call is the soul of the university, the soul of a city. And that is what we most preciously nurture. So I thank all of you for being here today and sharing with us. I am sorry. You know, I have to go do all these other things. I would love to be sitting in this audience this morning and the rest of the day. I wish you the very best. It's all about relationships, and I hope you come away from this one with new ones, deeper ones that make your community and our community an even better place to live. Thank you very much. Thank you.